Thank you very much, Christy, and uh, welcome to our webinar on resources and software for teaching with Game Maker Studio 2. I hope you're all keeping safe and well, and we're going to take a whistle stop tour of Game Maker and uh, a load of free resources that are available to teachers. So, to the agenda. We'll start with a brief overview of GameMaker and the results from a survey that we did of 150 um, educators. Uh, I'll be quite hands-on in showing you what content there is, both official and community content. Um, because we have a very large community, there's a lot of high quality free content available along with the, um, with the official content that we provide to help educators to teach GameMaker in the classroom. Uh, we're going to review the resources listed by grouping them into educational approaches. Um, and these are an educator-led environment, um, self-teaching uh, without educator invention using video intervention using video tutorials, and resources for a more advanced um, project-based approach. We're also going to have a look at some of the changes coming up and our approach to licensing and privacy. And we'll finish up with, uh, with the Q&A. Um, so we're gonna have quite a few slides and there'll be a number of links contained within these slides. So you'll receive the slides, um, as Christy said, afterwards, and you'll be able to just to click on those links. So don't worry about um, making notes of the uh, various links that are um, included. So we were first developed uh, in 1999 for use in education. Um, so we celebrated our 20th anniversary of Game Maker last November. Um, we're an easy to use 2D game making tool and being 2D is important for learning because it removes much of the uh, complexity associated with 3D and allows for faster progress. Um, the drag and drop system for no code development. So students firstly understand the fundamental building blocks and can then progress to coding when they're ready, letting them um, progress seamlessly without hitting a wall. Um, we have our own custom GML language, and this is a JavaScript-like language, and um, it's based on C and designed to be easy to use for game design and also simple to pick up. Um, includes image editor, sprite editor, object editor, room editor, um, it also now includes uh, a sequences animation tool. Um, there are free teacher resources um, that teach the fundamentals of coding and help students to build their own games step by step. And one of the things included within this are a free teacher license as well, a perpetual free teacher license, which is used for evaluating Game Maker and testing it out. And also it gives you access to uh, beta builds as well. Um, there's a marketplace where teachers can download free and paid assets. Um, there's a large active community um, with a forum, social media, and also beginner tips, which uh, are provided by our professional studios. Um, there's big studio credibility, so students can see hundreds of real games um, that have been made with Game Maker. Uh, there are many multi million sellers, including. Um, uh, a link here to um, the showcase, which um, uh, includes games like the, the current iPad game of the year, Hyperlight Drifter, which was made with, um, with Game Maker. And um, we just announced last week our uh, game of the year, which is Forager, which was made with Game Maker. Um, and we sign up over a thousand new users every single day, um, with 90% of them being beginners. So whilst we are a professional tool, we are at the same, same time a uh, foundation tool. So we sent out a questionnaire to our teachers and uh, I received 150 responses. Um, I always thought that game design would be proven to be a great way to teach coding, but I was surprised but this came through as just one of the most important factors. You can see the chart which shows the semantic scaling response to the question, which was how effective are game design lessons at teaching the following? Looking at the top performing elements based on their ratings of performing somewhat effective or better, we have um, improving learning engagement at 94.6%. 
um, individual confidence at 94%, planning at 91.4%, improving the student-teacher bond at 90.6%, um, programming languages at 89.3%, and improving class behaviour at 86.7%. Here's how teachers approach the teaching of game design um, from that survey. Um, as you can see, the teaching of Game Maker is very hands-on, so it suits kinesthetic learners. Um, this is probably why we hear that students who struggle to engage in other areas of the curriculum are much more motivated to engage with Game Maker game design lessons. I was talking to one of our teachers the other week who provides alternative provision to children who have behavioural difficulties which can't be accommodated in mainstream education and he was saying that the um, Space Bubbles video tutorials which we're going to look at shortly um, are at just the right level for his students. Um, there are three approaches to teaching that I'm going to cover in this presentation. First up is uh, making a game step by step with the teacher leading where the educator provides guidance on the teaching of coding to fulfill a school curriculum that is reinforced with step by step tutorials. It comes with an assessment structure and homeworks and this is, uh, this, this is the approach taken by our educator resources um, and will require the educator to run online tutorials to go through the slides um, or class tutorials obviously. Um, I'm sort of assuming online because a lot of people are, um, are still home learning at the moment. Next uh, is making a game step by step using video and this is an approach that solely relies on video tutorials where users build and extend games from no knowledge using drag and drop and then progress into making these games using GML coding. Uh, this is more appropriate in an out, out of school camps or clubs uh, where there's no formal framework needed for learning code. Um, the stu students are learning the skills they need in a more hands-on way, so educators may need to provide some structure to what they've learned afterwards using the, um, the classroom materials. This also requires less educator input, so um, is useful when students are home learning. And finally, we have um, the approach of setting a project for students to interpret. And this is actually the most popular approach and is used in more advanced curricula where uh, students are required to show creativity and practical implementation of programming. Um, for this approach, I'll show you the resources that can be um, that can provide guidance and inspiration to those students. When running the survey, we got some great feedback from educators on how using game design has aided the education process at their schools. And um, here's some of the feedback we got. The kids are happier in class. There aren't behavior problems like in other classes. Games require creatives and tech teams to work together with a common goal to solve. While they build games, they also build friendships, learn to overcome hardships and create something meaningful. My students very much enjoy the game design units that I teach. Personally, I think that game design is effective at improving problem solving, attention to detail and teamwork. The students have learned to solve complex or abstract problems by themselves. The content provides a sufficient challenge and helps develop persistence and attention to detail. It has certainly enabled some students who are otherwise disengaged from the curriculum to re-engage. And there's a link at the bottom of this page which takes you through to an article that we wrote and uh, was featured in Ed Technology magazine. So what about the students? What do they get out of it and what do they enjoy most? So this is what we asked the teachers and um, they came back and said definitely the end where they finally try their own game even if it was the most simple game in the world. Learning to overcome challenges and have a working program. The students love to show their parents what they have made by themselves. They're very proud if they get ideas done and improve their skills. The feeling of accomplishment when completing a game and watching others play the games they built. 
Just being able to create an original game and watch their peers play the game is such a high for these kids. To be able to say, I made that, is a real ego boost. Creating games, making rapid progress in a short span of time. Thinking up new games, brainstorming is normally a pain to get these students to do, but not when it involves game design. And seeing their ideas take shape. So the benefits for making games include achieving elements of a curriculum, student engagement, student creativity, team working, problem solving and persistence. So we're now looking at the um, educator resources um, for educator led tutorials. Um, here's a list of everything included in the materials. Um, Space Bubbles uh, is the name of the game. It's a drag and drop uh, based project um, where students work on one project over the course of eight one hour lessons and over those lessons the students are also taught how to program by recreating their own version of the game Space Bubbles. It's aimed at children aged 12 to 16 but can be used by um, older and younger and it's developed by Terry Watt who is a teacher and formerly a game designer. And there's a link at the bottom which takes you through to this. Um, the curriculum topics that are covered in um, the learning part of the, uh, the one-hour lessons include um, programming key some concepts and principles, sequencing, selection statements and iteration, um, modelling real-world problems and physical systems, and teacher review, self-review and peer review. There's a lot here, so um, I can, I'm going to show you around the content so you can get an appreciation of the structure. So I'm actually going to start off by playing the game that, you're, um, that the students will be making. So here we have it, Space Bubbles. This one to start. And there's my little craft at the bottom. And we're sending out gamma rays and we're, we're breaking. Um, Oh, that's not so good. Uh, we're popping bubbles and uh, we're breaking rocks and I'm going to try and pick up a power up and you can see at the top that um, we're heading towards a warp gate and that's 3,500 ish um, meters away. So we're, we're heading fast towards that. Um, you'll notice at the start here actually that I'm immune from, um, from getting uh, getting got at the beginning. Um, you can see there's lives, you can see that there's now um, bubbles coming towards us with multiple lives. And we can see a score accumulating at the top. Oh, get another power up, I think I need that. I need a couple of power ups. So we're heading towards the gate. And so this is a game that's made. Um, there's a core version of this game that's made. And then um, there for over the eight hours. And um, uh, for those students who are going quicker, um, there's uh, also a number of um, extension and challenge tasks for them to complete um, to have different types of bubbles, different types of stars. But we'll just go into that now and um, turn that off uh, and go into the structure of, um, of what we're learning. So. Okay, so just open this up here. So that was the demo game. Um, so you just have these two files which are created for the demo game. We then have lessons. So we've got, um, we've got PowerPoints for each of the lessons. Um, so you can see here the things that we're covering, principles of programming, sequences, selection statements, etc. We have homework, so there are three homeworks. Um, none of these actually require the use of a computer or game maker. Um, so we're, we're doing homeworks based on mixing and matching terms, um, sequ sequencing, um, so looking at sequence required to make a cup of hot chocolate, and selection statements to um, program a robot to make that hot chocolate, and then looking at various examples of code and um, figuring out what's going on. 
Um, there's a student booklet, which I'll just open up to show you. So it starts with the attainment sheet. We've got work um, worksheets here, which uh, the student works their way through and the various assessments. Put that down. And we have a guide here for the teacher. Um, so this takes you through um, the approach to learning, what you need to know, um, how to work the, uh, the assessment system, and it goes through each lesson step by step. So broadly, the first half hour of each lesson is going through the PowerPoint presentations with the students. Um, <clears throat> there's a recap, there's looking at the homework, and then the second half hour is um, them going through the video tutorials that are provided here um, to enable them to make the core game. Back into space bubbles. So, in each tutorial, there's a MP4 file here um, for playing the video. There's a complete version of the um, of the uh, of the game project for that particular tutorial, and there's also an executable file for that tutorial. And there's a PDF as well. So we have a uh, if you don't have access to being able to play the videos, you can print off um, PDF tutorials. Videos are better because they're more nuanced, but, um, but you can certainly get by with, um, with just the PDF tutorials if you need to. Um, so the first, uh, the first six videos build the core game, and then you go on to the extension and challenge tasks, um, where we've got things like um, wrapping the player, which is going, leaving on the left and coming back in on the right, adding more bubbles, um, random bubble direction, lots of different characteristics of, uh, of bubbles and pacing your game. And then the challenge task um, adds some real shine to it. So we've got pop effects, we've got scoring systems and lives, player lives, bubble health, which um, you saw those bubbles which had uh, several lives themselves and then bringing the asteroids and then making the asteroids um, follow you around and, um, uh, and also enable you to break them up. Okay, close that down. So that's, um, so that's essentially the educated resources. And as I say, these are available free of charge and um, for download on our website. So moving on to video-based um, tutorials, um, we've got the Space Rocks tutorial, um, which is in drag and drop and game maker language. So the educator materials are just in drag and drop. Um, so these are designed to give students um, a, a really quick way of seeing something moving and getting, getting something happening. Um, and uh, the drag and drop um, version is the best place to start. And then once you're confident in, in using drag and drop, then, um, then you can start making things with, uh, with Game Maker language. So what we get in here is an introduction to Game Maker and programming. You've got setting up movement, attacking, collisions, score, lives and effects, sound effects and polish. So these can actually, if um, you've got students who are getting stuck at any point with the, um, uh, with the uh, educational materials if they're working on their own, they can actually look at these and get another perspective on doing some of the same stuff. The second step to space rocks is um, what we've called space mods, um, which is an extension of space rocks. So you start to bring in some, um, uh, some more advanced topics. Um, like power ups, enemy ships, cameras which follow follow the um, the ship around, parallax, which is a, a layered background effect, which um, actually gives a bit of a three D look and feel, and visual effects like um, like particles. You saw probably from my ship when I was showing you um, the original game. You can see the particles coming out of the back of it when I was going forwards or up, and also screen shapes. So. Uh, then maybe if you if you break up a um, a rock, you know the screen whole screen shake. So there's some nice things there. And this is a comment that we got back from um, a user who felt that once they create 
uh, once they created the game uh, with space rocks and then moved on to space mods, they actually felt that, um, that they were at a point where they could actually now start to customize the game themselves and do their own things with it. In terms of uh, official video tutorials, this is the next one in the series that we have. Um, and this is Breakthrough, which um, is a classic, uh, a classic game, um, a brick breaking game where you, you've got a, a paddle at the bottom and you're bouncing a ball up and, and breaking bricks. It's a bit more of a complex game to make. Um, and again, this is in drag and drop and GML. Um, so you can make it in one version, go back and make it in, in another. Um, Approximately half of the games that uh, are made with GameMaker are made in drag and drop. So there's um, there's definitely no need to um, start getting into uh, into um, GML uh, game making language. Um, and uh, certainly in terms of applying all of the uh, curriculum elements, then drag and drop is absolutely fine at, um, at teaching students at how to do that. And uh, both this game and the uh, the previous game are both um, at beginner level. So, and this is a 75 minute video tutorial in two parts. Um, we've got a number of tools within Game Maker. And so once you've been through those first two beginner tutorials, it'd probably be a good idea to um, have a play around with uh, the video tutorials that we have on some of the tools that we've got. So we've got the image editor, object editor, room editor, sprite editor, tile sets editor, we've got workspaces and, and a debugger as well. Um, so uh, you can go through those and that will give you much more of a feeling for how to use all of the tools within GameMaker. Um, but you certainly don't need any of that um, before you're, uh, you're starting and making your first games. Next up um, is a platformer tutorial. So um, this is a much more expansive set of tutorials. Um, so it starts off at beginner level um, and this is based entirely on GML, uh, Game Maker language, and then it progresses to intermediate. Um, and this has been made uh, by Sean Spaulding, who um, is a, a member of our community and um, he's also a teacher. Um, and so it connects to his own video um, tutorials, which are, uh, which are on YouTube. And all the assets are available for this. And this takes you through to Sean's um, platformer tutorial, which is, goes into a lot more depth. Um, and as you can see from here, there's 27 videos that go to make Sean's tutorial, which follow on from, um, from our um, introduction. And, uh, and you can see most of those are half an hour long, so you'll never be short of content um, uh, to inspire your students to, to make a game. Also with video tutorials, um, self-learning approaches uh, for the students. Um, there's also Udemy and Pact Courseware, which is, um, which is available. Um, so they provide high quality tutorials, which are often on sale. Um, one thing just to be aware of though, is that some of these, because GameMaker has been around a long time, that they still carry some of the uh, older versions uh, for GameMaker Studio and GameMaker 8. Um, so just to make sure that the, the version that you're getting the tutorials for are for GameMaker Studio 2, if you are going down this, um, down this approach. But there's, um, there's lots of games and lots of, um, lots of approaches. Um, uh, being made. So looking now at project-based um, uh, project uh, tutorials or, or ways in which um, you, can, you can set a theme and, um, and then encourage your students to interpret it. Um, and you can have a marking system which would be based on uh, interpretation of the theme, complexity or functionality um, use, playability, coding practice, or, or creativity. Um, quite often we, we would see this, um, you know, you would have teams working on this, or it could be the sort of thing that you could actually run as a, as a game jam over a period as well. What we have in this slide here is um, 
uh, a list of resources for tools, artwork, and audio, etc., that can be used as the basis for game creation. Um, the global game jam resources at the bottom are particularly noteworthy um, as they happen to run the, the world's largest game jam each year, which takes place over three days in um, in January. So this is um, uh, this set of resources has been um, accumulated over over a good period of time, and it's a good place to start. Um, and uh, yeah, all everything that's listed here is um, is free of charge. We have our own learning hub on our website at uh, yoyogames.com slash learn, where we've got a central repository for video tutorials, written tutorials, official and third party tutorials. Um, so when you're setting a, a, a task or a project for students, sometimes they need a bit of uh, inspiration on um, yeah, what sort of game they can make or what they can do and, um, uh, and what the, uh, the tool is able to, um, to to uh, to achieve and so this is a good place to start looking and, um, and seeing what others are doing with it and, and looking to build on that and uh, this is a this is an excellent area which um, which students should should go and take a look at if they're uh, if they're working on a project because what we have here is um, we've got our own team and uh, professional studio developers contributing examples of, of things that they can uh, that you can do with game maker so the the pro developers will be talking about games that they've made and how they've done things with it with game maker in those games so you can go and have a look and see what they've done and get their their view on how to do it um, and we've also got things like coffee break tutorials which um, can just last half an hour um, and they'll teach you something like the current one that's going up um, or it's going up tomorrow, I think, uh, is based on lighting. So we'll show you uh, yeah, a basic way of setting up lighting in your game. Um, and then we've got loads of these. So um, uh, you know, the, these are little elements that um, if, you've, if you're setting a project that the students can then, um, can then get an idea to uh, you know, how they can include that within, uh, within the project. As I said, we've got a huge, um, huge community and um, YouTube, uh, they've created loads and loads of content. So YouTube is a great place to go and get some inspiration as well. Um, you know, with this, uh, with this particular search, you can see I just put Game Maker Space Tutorials and we got loads back um, in YouTube. So you know, there's all different sorts of things that, that can be made. Um, so uh, yeah, again, if you're working on a project-based uh, approach, which tends to kick in at age sort of 15, um, then um, then uh, that's a good place to go. Um, one of the advantages of Game Maker is our um, documentation. So um, all Game Maker Studio Two features and settings are fully documented um, with examples, and uh, this is in our online uh, manual, um, which you can actually click to from the um, from within um, Game Maker as well. And if you get stuck at any time, um, you can get an instant response from our community support. Um, so we have. Um, we have a forum here, uh, which we moderate, um, and you can just go in and um, ask a question. And you know, as you can see here, um, you know, you're getting responses within um, within a matter of half an hour or so. Um, we've got about ten thousand people who are really active on this forum. Um, lots of people on there that are um, that spend a lot of time um, going in and helping others to um, uh, to. Uh, Get over whatever issues it is that they um, that they're ha having with Game Maker, or you know, to showing people how to do things. Um, very passionate. We've got some things coming up. Um, so version two point three, which is now in open beta, and we're expecting it to go stable probably over the next couple of weeks. Um, and it's a is a huge update. It's a very big update. Um, 
if you have GameMaker um, and you're using it at school, it's not a compulsory update. So um, you've got plenty of time to check it out um, and choose when you decide to, um, to go, uh, go with it. Um, all educators with a free teacher license have access to the beta before it goes stable, uh, which we expect to happen, as I say, in a couple of weeks. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, a little later on about how to access the free license as well. Um, so anyone who is working in a school can get a free, um, a free education license. Um, the big uh, news in this release is the, um, the sequences game and animation tool, which you can see there. Um, which has been um, at least 18 months in the making and which has been described as being like a, a flash animation tool for 2D games. It enables easy creation of cutscenes and the ability to animate sprites and tie that into logic within the game. It also enables the synchronization of audio, such as talking or playing different audio clips when a character or sprite is walking over, for example, different surfaces. There have also been some significant upgrades to the resource tree, um, which is the, the, basically the tool bar on the right hand side here, um, which we're now calling the asset browser. Um, so that's been made uh, a lot more flexible, um, but it's also very familiar. It, you probably wouldn't notice much of a difference, but, um, but when you start to play it, play around with it with more, in more detail, you can see that there are, there's a lot more flexibility there. Um, We've got uh, um, some tutorials here. Um, it's the sequences tutorials, and there's also um, a link here that takes you through to uh, new IDE features. Um, so there's more tutorials on these popping up all the time. Uh, we've had our community um, doing beta testing on this for a number of months now, and so we're, we're starting to see more and more of, um, of their tutorials coming up showing how to use sequences. Um, there have also been some updates to GML, which um, bring it in line with modern scripting languages. Um, there are some additions and updates to arrays, chained accessors, function scripts, and method variables, as well as struts and error handling with um, exceptions, try, catch, and finally. So the, these are predominantly advanced language features that you probably wouldn't use at, um, at age, uh, age 12 to 14, for example. Um, their impact on the educator materials are minimal. Um, if you're teaching at college and university level, though, the students will, um, will need to be more aware of them. Um, but it's more of a case that GML will now start to look more like um, some of the other languages being taught, such as JavaScript, rather than it, um, moving away from established norms. Um, what we do have is an update to the um, the space bubble material coming out, which is um, going to be created in um, version 2.3. So that, that's going to be available probably again within the next week or two. So um, it will either coordinate exactly with, uh, with the release or it will, uh, it will be a week or two later. So as I say, um, we're updating space bubbles. Um, We've also got uh, a, an in-depth um, article here on the, um, the differences uh, between the old space bubbles and the, and the new version of space bubbles. And we've also got uh, an in-depth article on the workflow changes. Um, but again, this is probably something if you're teaching at university level, you need to be aware of, but um, at high school level and middle school, um, less so. So on to classroom licensing options. Um, we've got three types of license available and um, these can be purchased through Studica. So there's the educator license, which provides uh, desktop um, exports um, and uh, that exports to Windows, Mac and Linux. Uh, we've got educator plus, which um, it's between in the middle of the three, and that provides you with the desktop license and also a web license for an HTML5 export. And we've got Achiever, and, um, and we've recently added 
to achieve a, a PlayStation 4 export um, to be used in conjunction with the, um, the PlayStation 4 academic program. Um, there's a UWP license which um, enables export to um, Xbox One and there's mobile, web and desktop as well. Um, there's some information here on setting up for PS4 because um, you need to need to first join the, um, the PlayStation or Sony um, academic project. Um, and there are one year and two year license options available. So, um, and Studico will be able to provide a quote to you. Um, privacy is uh, one of those things which is increasingly important um, over the last few years. Um, so the situation we have is that we don't collect any um, information at all on, um, on students. Um, the students are, are seats um, and those are set up by the teacher and they're entirely anonymous to us. Um, so the, the teacher will register an account um, and then they'll purchase some licenses and then they'll allocate those licenses as seats. Um, the seats are uh, based on concurrent use. So for example, if you've got uh, a classroom with 20 um, computers in it, then um, you need 20 licenses and then you can have multiple classes going in and using, um, using that those 20 devices, but you don't even need 20 licenses to be able to do that. Um, one thing I should mention is that Game Maker can be run on uh, Windows and it can be run on Mac. Um, can't currently be run on Chrome, although that is, oh, sorry, Chromebooks. That is something that we're, uh, that we're looking at. Um, there's more information um, about uh, privacy and our approach to privacy um, and the anonymity um, within our privacy policy. And there's a link through to that. And uh, I'm very pleased to say that we've been approved for use by educationframework.com. So um, if you're a member of that, uh, then you can go and find us on there and, um, uh, and check us out. So congratulations as a, as a thank you for attending the webinar and making it all the way to, to the end. We're, uh, we're going to enable you to be eligible to receive um, the free teacher license. So um, Christy will send you a link to that. Um, you just click on, uh, on this button. And, um, uh, and when, when she sends over the, the slides, it will set you up for, um, for a free teacher license, which will give you access to um, to our existing open beta build for Game Maker version 2.3. Um, so you'll have immediate access to that. Um, and, um, and it's a, a desktop export license as well, which is perpetual. So um, you'll be able to use it over and over. Okay, so any questions? Let's have a look to see whether there's been any questions come through. Andrew, I just have a question that I get a lot. Um, is it possible to run Game Maker online, or is it a download? It's a download, um, and that's a good that's a good point because um, uh, one of the things, particularly with students working from home, um, is that uh, they they would need to download it if they're in a home learning environment, and that can be done from our yoyogames.com slash education page. Okay. Um, so they can they can just access that and download the the Windows or the um, or the Mac version. Okay, and then can the students download Game Maker without creating an account, or do they need to create an account? No, they wouldn't need to create an account. That bypasses creating an account. Okay. Um, the, the teacher, once they've created an account, can just send them a link. Um, the teacher would need to get an, a, an account, but um, to be able to set up the seats. Um, and by setting up the seat, you just you you, you put in a, a, a username and um, and, a, and a password, provide those to the students, and um, and once they've downloaded the software, they can just apply that and use that to log in to Game Maker itself. Okay, and that looks like the end of the questions we have for now.
Any more questions? No, it looks like that's all the questions we had. <laughs> I got off lightly this time then, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just Thank move to the last. I need today. <laughs> I'll just move to the last slide. Okay. Here we go. Um, so over to you, Christy. Okay, I just wanted to thank you, Andrew, and thank you for everyone attending today. Um, as you know, GameMaker is an excellent tool for teaching code and STEM-related topics. So if you do have any questions, you can email us at marketing at studica.com, or you can call us at 888-561-7521. We'll be happy to help. And just a reminder, I will be sending out an email with a link to that recording. It'll include the slides with all the relevant links that are listed within the presentation. So if you do have any other questions at that point, you can feel free to just email me those at that time. So just thank you everyone and enjoy your day. <laughs>